Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.5, Recursion and Iteration. We better start with some vocab words. First vocab word is recursive, sequence. That is a sequence in which each term is determined by one or more of the previous today. Then we have the explicit formula, and all that is, is it gives a sub n, that is a sub n, as a function of n. And ladies and gentlemen, what does this function of n mean? It sounds tricky, but all it's saying is that it's writing with the function or it's the variable in the equation is n. n is a variable in the equation. A recursive formula, then each is formulated from one or more previous terms. This is what a recursive formula would look like, and we'll touch on that here on the next slide. And then a Fibonacci sequence, actually. Fibonacci is a famous mathematician. He came up with a sequence. Uh, happens a lot in nature, where the terms are the sum of the two previous terms. So these two add up to one, these two add up to five, these two add up to three, so on and so forth forever and ever. Now we are asked to find the first five terms of the sequence in which a sub 1 is 5, and our recursive formula is this guy right here, and n is greater than or equal to 1. So we are looking for our first five terms. Well, our first term, a sub 1, is going to be 5. But then our next term, a sub 2, we can find a sub 2 by using this formula. Well, I'm going to write it like this. a sub 2 can be found using a sub 1 and then plus 1. So we have 2 from our formula. And then we take that times 5, the one that they gave us that we started with, and then plus 7. That gives us 17. Now, for a sub 3, I'm going to write it as a sub 2 plus 1. That's going to be 2 times our formula. Now I'm using a sub 2, which is 17. So I'm going to put my 17 in for a sub n. And then it's plus 7. That gives us 41. And we just keep rocking. Then we go to a sub 4. a sub 4 is the same thing as a sub 3 plus 1. That equals 2 from our formula, and then I plug in 41 in for my n, and then it's plus 7, that equals 89. And then finally for our fifth term, we have a sub 5. That equals a sub 4 plus 1 equals 2 times, that's going to be 89, and then we close that back up plus 7, which gives us 185. So we have a sub 1 is 5, a sub 2 is 17, a sub 3 is 41, a sub 4 is 89, and a sub 5 is 185. And those five terms are the first five terms of the sequence. Now we have some recursive formulas for sequences. First one we have is the arithmetic sequence, where we are just adding the difference. So if we are adding or subtracting to the next term, that is going to be an arithmetic sequence. However, if we are multiplying to the next term, we have a geometric sequence. So let's take a peek at some of these. With 2, we are asked to write a recursive formula for each sequence. Well, how am I going from 3 to 10? I can find that out if I go backwards, correct, and go 10 minus 3. Well, 10 minus 3 is 7, so I am adding 7 to 3, and I am adding 7 to 7, or 10. I'm adding 7 to 17 to get 24. And finally, yes, it does fit. So my difference is 7. So now that means I'm using the arithmetic sequence. And all we have to do is go like so. We have a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, and then what's our difference? Plus 7. We also have to label our a sub 1, and that is 3, the first term in the sequence. Now with 3, we go from 5 to 20, and how do we get there? Well, we add 15, right? Well, how about 20 to 80? Do we add 15? We do not, so that doesn't work. Well, let's try going backwards. 
Let's try going this way and using division. Well, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So I take 20 times 4. Is that 80? Yes, it is. 80 times 4, that's 320 times 4. It works out. So I have an R that equals 4. And so I'm going to use the geometric sequence where we have the first term, a sub 1, is 5. And then my formula, my recursive formula, is a sub n. That equals 4. And then it's times a sub n minus 1. Now one more. Here we're given an a sub 3 equals 6 and a d equals 5. Here all we have to do is our d equals what? A 5. Well, what, are we, what do we have when we were given d? An arithmetic sequence. So we just can go a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 5. Let's jump into some word problems now. Here we have Nate had $15,000 in credit card debt when he graduated from college. The balance increased by 2% each month due to interest, and Nate could only make payments of $400 per month. Write a recursive formula for the balance of his account each month, then determine the balance after four months. So I'm going to start with the initial balance, and I'm going to just pick a variable for the initial balance. Well, I'm going to pick a variable that fits well with the recursive formula. And so that's going to be a sub 1 because that initial balance is going to change after time, correct? Well, now the balance each month we are going to add to it. Well, how do we find that balance each month? Well, we take 2% each month. So it's going to be point, and how do we represent that 2% as a decimal? It's going to be 0 0.02 and then times my a sub 1, and then how do we represent monthly payment? I'm going to pay that $400 each and every month. So now let's try to write a recursive uh, formula for this right here. Since we started with A sub 1, I'm going to say it's A sub 2. That's going to be, now we combine some like terms here, right? We have an A sub 1 here and an A sub 1 here that's being multiplied. So when we combine it, we have one whole one and then plus point. 0, 2 of another one, that's going to be a sub 1 minus 400. Now let's write a recursive formula, and it's going to look like a sub n equals 102 or 1.02, and then a sub n minus 1, and then minus 400. So now with the first four months, what are they going to look like? Month 1. We have a sub 1. That balance is just going to be $15,000. So it's just going to be 15000 Then next we have a sub 2. a sub 2 we can represent as a sub 1 plus 1. That gives me. Now I'm going to use this guy right here. I'm going to use our formula. 1.02 times this $15,000. 15, 0, 0, 0, minus 400. That's going to give me $14,900. So that's after the first month. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, it only goes down 100 even though we're making a $400 payment because we are multiplying this to the 15,000. Let's keep going. Month 3, we can represent that A sub 2 plus 1. That's going to be 1.02 times 14,900 minus 400. That's going to give me 14,798. And then one more for month 4. We have a sub 4. And now I'm just going to jump right into it. 1.02 times this guy, which is 14,798. And that's going to be minus 400. That equals 14,693 and 96 cents. So after four month, four months, he has a balance of $14,693 and 96 cents. Last vocab word is iteration, and that is the process of composing a function with itself repeatedly. 
So what do some of these problems look, at, look like? We are asked to find the first three terms of iterates. You can call them x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3 of our function here for the initial value of x sub naught or x sub 0 equals 5. So let's go ahead and try to find that first one, x sub 1. That's going to be 3 from this guy, 3. And then what are we going to take that times? We're going to take that times x sub naught because we have to go back one. And here we are at x sub 1. So if we go back one, we're going to go to x sub 0. And then it's just going to be minus 1. That gives me 14. So x sub 1 equals 14. Next, we have x sub 2. That's going to be 3, and then we take that times 14 because we go back one. We always take it times the 1 from the back, which is 3 times 14, still minus 1. That gives me 41. So x sub 2 is 41, and then we're looking for the first 3, so then we have one more, x sub 3, that's going to be equal to 3 times, now 41 minus 1, and that gives me 122, and so my last iterate of x is going to be 122. And ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 10.5, recursion and iteration. Good day.